Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this another Monday morning manner. And what a time for us to come together to partake of the spiritual manner, the holy manner that God has in store for us so that we can face this weekday with courage, with verve, and with faith in him. I invite you now to bow your heads, lift your hearts to God in prayer with me. O oh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this another day. We have embarked upon another work week and pray, O oh God, that you will be with us. I pray that you will give us the strength to surmount every difficulty, to cross every river. And may your name be glorified in what we will do today and tomorrow and the next day. And the next is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So happy to be with you this morning, dear friends, in um, Zoom land, in virtual land. And I invite you to let us seriously consider the, the experience of Jesus, that which he had to um, go through while he came, while he was here upon this earth. I have drawn my devotion this morning uh, from, the, from, the, from the experience of Jesus Christ around and on the cross. And I would like to use as my text for today, Matthew chapter 27 and verse 46. And I want you to let us just zero in on a few words which I will tell you about as we come to it. But verse 46 says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, and hear the words, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now these words are so profound. They are so meaningful. They are so germane to our salvation that they can stand in repetition over and over again. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, the writer Mark uses the words Eloi, Eloi. But we're not, we're not going to be allowed to be caught up with the difference between Eli and Eloi. They are really saying the same thing in a slightly different language. But I want us to keep in mind what led up to that moment when Jesus uttered those words. We know that the cross, the cross experience, was not an easy one for anyone. The Romans used to use that, 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 that system of punishment, that method of punishment to their most heinous criminals. Jesus tasted that. We know that Jesus Christ was going through quite a lot as he headed up to the cross. He was pained in Gethsemane. He walked to Calvary. And we know that it was at Calvary that he was humiliated by his enemies. It was at Calvary that he met with treatment that he did not deserve. It was at Calvary that he uttered some words, some words that we will never forget as Christians. It was right there at Calvary on the cross where he said things like, it is finished. And we don't have the time to plumb those statements. It is on the cross that he gave his 
promise to the thief, thou shalt be with me in paradise. It was on the cross that he said to his, to his mother, woman, behold thy son. It is on the cross he said to John, behold thy mother. You know, but it is on the cross that he used the words that we have for our devotional this morning, this Monday morning. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know very well, and if you don't know, let me inform you this morning, that it was quite a heart-tugging experience for the father to have looked at his son and saw him suffer, saw him suffer at the hands of those he came to save. So excruciating was it for Christ that it touched his father's heart, that his father glanced away. His father looked away from him. And it was at that moment when Jesus could not have borne the looking away of his father. You imagine that. His father, whose character is nothing but love, turned away. And Jesus was affected terribly by that away glance. It was then he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You know, I want us today, friends, to consider what was going on at that time. Consider why Jesus came to the place that his loving father could not have looked at him. You see, he was carrying the weight of your sins and mine. You said, your sins? What have you done so, so heinously to allow Jesus' Father, the Creator, to turn his back upon his Son? Some time ago I read in uh, the book written by Jody to, uh, he, he, her name is Joni Erickson Tara. The book was jointly written. The other author was Stephen Estes. And I like the attempt that these two writers made to bring us to the understanding that it was our sin, your sin and mine, that caused Jesus to have suffered the way he did. And uh, I didn't let you know this, but I want to let you know now that my thoughts today revolve around the topic, where do I come in? So you're asking now the question, Pastor, where do I come in with the suffering that Jesus experienced? And I like the list of sins because I told you that it was our sins that drove him to the cross. It was for your sin and mine why Jesus suffered the way he did, even by not having his father be able to look at him. And you say, but what could I have done? And I like the list of sins that uh, Joni uh, mentioned here. And I'm going to try to just list them for you and see if you can identify with any of these misdemeanors. This paragraph begins, Son of man, why have you behaved so? In other words, the author is trying to imagine that 
Jesus is crying out. And the father is asking, why are you behaving like that? The answer is in the fact that he was suffering for your sins and mine. And listen to the list now. I'm going to try to read every one. Perhaps you are guilty of one of these sins. So solemnly think, solemnly contemplate what you perhaps have done, what you perhaps are involved in now, what you ever would be in at some time which will constitute one of the sins for which Jesus died. You have cheated, lusted, stolen, gossiped, murdered, envied, hated, lied. You have cursed, robbed, overspent, overeaten, fornicated, disobeyed, embezzled, and blasphemed. All the duties you have shirked, the children you have abandoned. Who has never so ignored the poor, so played the coward, so belittled my name? Have you ever held your razor tongue? What a self-righteous pitiful drunk. You, who molested young boys, peddle killers drugs, travel in cliques, and mocked your parents. Who gave you the boldness to rig, rid, to rig elections, foment resolutions, torture animals, and worship demons? Does the list ever end? Spitting families, raping virgins, acting smugly, playing the pimp, buying politicians, practicing exhortation, filming pornography, accepting bribes. You have burnt down buildings, perfected terrorist tactics, funded false religions, traded in slaves, relishing each morsel and dragging and bragging about it. I hate, I loathe these things in you because for everything about you consumes me. Can you not feel my wrath? That's the question with which this paragraph ends. And the father, of, of course, felt the wrath of sin. Hence, he looked away from his son. That wrath was real to the father. A wrath that we cannot fully understand and will never fully understand. A wrath that caused his father to turn himself away from his son. How could his father look at him covered with sins he did not commit. Is that the reality? Sins that Christ did not commit, but for those sins he suffered. For those sins he groaned. For those sins his heart was broken. Jehovah's rage against humankind from every century, every age, exploded as it were, in a direction away from his son. Do you wonder why the cry? Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken me? But the Trinity planned it. The Son endured it. The saints enabled it. Sorry, the Spirit enabled it. The Father accepted the sacrifice, praise God, for sin and was satisfied, the rescue was, com was accomplished. Thank God. Glory be to God, <clears throat> who asked us to trust him, even when he calls on us to suffer. I said, even when he calls upon us to suffer. And I like to close 
with a thought taken from the, from the prophets, the prophets writing, the prophet to the church, the, the remnant church. I like these thoughts couched in these words as man's substitute and shorty. The iniquity of men, the iniquity of men was laid upon Christ. He was connected or counted a transgressor that he might redeem them, that's us, from the curse of the law. The guilt of every, every descendant of Adam, of every age, pressing down upon his heart. And the wrath of God and the terrible manifestation of his displeasure became, because of iniquity, filled the soul of his son with consternation. Note these words. The withdrawal of the divine countenance from the Savior in this hour of supreme anguish pierced his heart with a sorrow that can never be fully understood by man. Every pang endured by the Son of God upon the cross, the blood drops that flowed from his head, his hands, his feet, the convulsion of agony and which rocked his frame and the unutterable anguish that filled his soul at the hiding of the Father's face from him. Speak to man, saying, It is for love of thee that the Son of God consents to have these heinous crimes laid upon him. For thee he spoiled the dominion of death and open the gates of paradise and immortal life. It is for you, my friends. Thus Monday morning, consider it. It is for you, for me. Perhaps having committed one of those sins I talked about. Perhaps the, the sin that you have committed or are committing or will commit is not among the list that I have just given here. But it's for you that Christ bore and it's for you he suffered. For you he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As we sally forth into this new week, I am asking you to consider what Jesus' death on the cross means to you. Where do you come in? Where do I come in? Yes. We come in. We are in because of our sinful nature. And Christ wants to rid us of that nature. Christ wants to clean us up. Hence, he sacrificed his life. And this is telling you that if you have to even suffer for Jesus' sake, suffer and accept the penalty he has paid on the cross for your sin. May God help you to pledge even now, even today, that you will give yourself over to him completely and allow him to save you, not in, but from your sins. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the moments we have spent contemplating the sacrifice that Jesus Christ your son made, contemplating the pain that you suffered, the wrath that you experienced and had to allow your son to feel that wrath, all for us. May we, in appreciation, give ourselves to you and resolve that we are yours forever and ever. And may we keep that song, Father, in our hearts, that song that Christians will always sing near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all the healing stream, flowed from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find peace beyond the river.
May this be our experience, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.